Welcome to Labnits.com. In the second video in our Cisco IS BYOD mini series, we will look at wireless device onboarding with single SSID. During our lab setup, we have added a wireless LAN controller at IP.104 and an AP that's on the VLAN 64 it will be getting DSCP. And this is the same VLAN the user will be dropped off as well. We still have a user admin one who is now a member of both BYOD user groups as well as the wireless users. And he's going to try to get access to the wireless network using his personal Don Domain computer as well as his iPhone and Android device. It will be using a single SSID called LM-internal that will be supporting both PEEP and TLS. So here in the little flow diagram, the process is very similar to wired onboarding. The only difference is how the user gets authenticated initially. And here with wireless, the user will be connected using PEEP while well, he, he will be able to enter a username and password and then go through a device registration and download uh, the network settings as well as certificates and then reconnect to the network with EPTLS using the previously obtained certificate and get a full access to the network. So basically the concept of using a single SSID for this is we'll be able to distinguish whether he wants to, or whether the user has actually gone through the onboarding process. If he's coming through using PEEP, that means he still needs to go through the registration process. But if he's coming through using EPTLS, then we'll know that he successfully registered a device and is trying to reconnect to the network. Okay, so first let's take a look at how we have the user setups uh, at this point. So here on our Active Directory user computers, we have a BYOD user groups and has a member of admin one and employee one. But for the wireless user groups, there's only one member which is admin one. So employee one would not be able to connect using wireless because he's not part of this particular AD group. Okay, now moving on to the configuration on ICE, we're just gonna continue where we left off from our previous video with Y onboarding. So most of the basic config has already been completed back in the previous video. So if you guys have missed that, Feel free to go back and look at uh, the, the setup of things like um, SCEP for the certificate uh, request. So I'll just show you real quick. So like for example, under the certificate, we've gone through and set up SCEP uh, connections already back to the certificate authority server. Okay, so now we're gonna start off with looking at our pol authentication policy. Since we're now dealing with wireless, so here we already have a policy or authentication rule configured for wireless, again from our previous video. And we are allowing both uh, PEEP and EPTLS in the allow protocol. And for the identity source, we have certificate as well as the AD. So we're going to be using both in this lab. Okay, next we're going to look at the authorization policies configuration. We're going to start off with configuring the condition. So policy and then uh, conditions. And under authorization, compound condition, we're going to go ahead and duplicate wireless 802.1x. So first we're going to be dealing the dealing with the initial connection with PEEP. So let's say duplicate. And we're going to change the name to LMDBULAN BYOD. And let's call it onboard. So we know this is the going to be using the rule for onboarding. It will add attributes. Since it's going to be using, or the user is going to be coming in through PEEP, we're going to match it using the authentication method and then MSChat v2, which happens within the PEEP uh, session. Okay, next we're going to we are going to condition based on the group membership. So we go to AD, external group. We want to make sure the user, before they're allowed to start the onboarding process, is a member of BYOD user group, as well as the wireless user. Okay, so also wireless user. And what you can also do if you have multiple SSID, just to make sure that the user is coming from the correct SSID. So let me lock into the wireless LAN controller and show you our current setup. So here in the list of SSID, 
we have a Allium internal with the WLAN ID one. Since we're dealing with a single SSID, the user will be connecting through Allium internal. In order to kind of lock that down a little bit, you can also create a condition based on which SSID the user is coming from. So here with the airspace to WLAN ID, I would say it's equal to one, which is that value right here. Okay, so submit. Okay, so that is the condition for device to onboard. Next, we're gonna create one for the actual or authorization for the registered device. Here we can just duplicate what we just created. So we had this, go duplicate. This time let's call it LM to BYOD. BYOD. And here let's make a quick modification. So now instead of it being MS Chat V2, it's gonna be EAP TLS. So go back to network access, EAP authentication, and we'll select EAP TLS. We still want to use the BOD user and wireless user group membership. And we still want to make sure it's coming, the user is coming from the correct SSID. Okay, so submit. So the only thing we changed was the protocol. Okay, so when the user first connects to the uh, associated to the SSID, all the access we want to allow the users to have is just to talk to ICE. So we're going to create an or we already have actually created a access list on the wireless line controller. An access control list called LM eyes only. So if you look under those, all we are allowing is DSCP, DNS, and pretty much connection to ICE. Just allow all IP at this point. And then having the ACL configured already, we can now start creating the authorization profile. Okay, so go add, we create one called LM to BLAN eyes only, just to allow connection to ICE. And we would like to, at this point, the user should have been authenticating through PEEP already. So all we need to do is to present the user with the device station page, which is under supplicant provisioning. And here on the ACL, we specify the ACL that is created on the Wireless LAN controller, which is LM eyes only. Okay, make sure the name the name uh, matches. Right here is if you scroll down the bottom, it shows you the actual redirect URL that the user will be sent to. So go submit. Next, we're going to create an authorization profile for a device blacklist. So just like you see in the previous video when the device is lost and the user would like to mark it as lost through their My Device portal page to cut off the access on the device. So here with wireless, we're going to duplicate black hole wireless access and we will call it LM WLAN blacklist. We'll keep pretty much everything the same except the AC at the bottom and again once the device is blacklisted, all access we want to let the device have is the access to ICE because ICE the one's going to throw up a block page. So we're just going to use the same ACL LM ICE only. Okay, now that we have all the components, we can start creating our, our authorization rules. So here we go insert rule below. The first one we will configured is for the blacklist. So we'll call LM to BLAN blacklist. And we'll condition based on group membership of blacklist. And also we want to make sure a device is connected through the wireless. So we're going to choose device, device type equal we have a device uh, type called WLC for wireless LAN controller and then we will give them the WLAN blacklist okay so that's done 
We'll create one more below. This is going to be for the onboarding using PEEP. So we're going to name it LMWLAMBYOD onboard. There'll be any. Let's delete that because we already have the condition created. So it's select from the library. Compound condition, and we have here one called LMWLAN BIOD onboard. And we want to make sure that we only allow access to ICE. So the VLAN ICE only. Done. And then our last author authorization rule is for the EPTLS authentication. So LM to VLAN BYOD. We want to make sure that the device has already been registered. So we're going to select register devices group. And we're going to pick the condition that we created earlier. So compound condition LM to VLAN BYOD that was uh, trying to match EPTLS. And we are going to allow the VLAN LM permit all that we already have created. And that's just basically using the access list call on the device line controller LM permit all. Okay, so that's also done. Let's go ahead and save. So that's all it is to it for our authorization policy. Next, we are going to configure client provisioning. And this is for the wireless network setting that needs to be pushed to the client or the user device. So under policy results, client provisioning, resources, here we add network uh, native supplicant profile. And let's name it LM, WLAN, and TLS, just so we know that it is wireless and using TLS. And we can and we can just use the same profile for all the operating systems. So we're going to leave that as all. And we know it's just wireless for SSID. It's going to be LM internal. Make sure there's no typo here. And security, we're using the BPA2 enterprise, and for the protocol is TLS. Okay, with key size, let's leave it default 1024. So save. So that will be the network setting that would get sent to user device. Now we need to configure client provisioning rules. Since we're dealing with both Windows machine as well as the iPhone and Android operating system, first we are going to create one for Windows. Okay, as you can see, it will be slightly different as far as the configuration here. The first rule, we call it LM to BLAN wins for Windows operating system. Make sure we, we select Windows all. And here we specify the request coming from a wireless line controller. So it will be wireless. So for the results, we'll be dealing with native supplicant configuration. Windows require those little wizard. That's why we need to create a separate rule for it. And we're going to select the latest one, which is Win SP Wizard 10023. That's what we have. And now for the network setting or the profile, we select LMWLAN TLS. Okay, we'll create one more. So we can, uh, let's go insert new policy below. And this one's gonna be for the mobile device, iPhone and Android, or iDevices, LM, called LMWLAN mobile. Operating system, we'll select uh, Android, and we'll add one more or the uh, Apple iOS all. Okay, again, we're conditioning on the device coming or connecting through wireless. And the result, you can see, there's no longer, like Windows, the config wizard. For mobile, it's just the wizard profile. So here we select the common profile we have, LMWLAN TLS, and then we save. Okay, so that should be it for the configuration we need on ICE. Next, we're going to start testing using our 
client devices.